There are other religions which say that because of the sin of the woman, pregnancy is a curse on the woman. And Almighty God, according to the other religions, they say that the woman bears labor pains in pain because of a sin. Pregnancy degrades the woman in other religions. But in Islam, it's the opposite. Pregnancy uplifts the woman. Allah says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 1, respect the womb that bore you. Allah says in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 14, that we have ordained the human beings to be good to their parents. In travel upon travel did the mother bore them, and in years twin was the weaning. Allah says in Surah Aqaf, chapter number 46, verse number 15, we have enjoined on the human beings to be good to their parents. In pain did the mother bore you, and in pain did she give him birth. So pregnancy uplifts a woman, does not degrade her. And the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, chapter number 2, book of Adab, hadith number 2, a man approached the Prophet and asked him that who deserves the maximum love and companionship in this world? The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked after that who? The Prophet repeated, your mother. The man asked after that who? Again, the Prophet said, your mother. The man asked for the fourth time, who next? Then the Prophet said, your father. In short, 75%, three-fourths of the love and companionship goes to the mother. 25%. One fourth goes to the father. In short, mother gets the gold medal, she gets the silver medal, as well as the bronze medal. The father has to be satisfied with the mere consolation prize. I have to mention some things about women's rights in the lecture of Universal Brotherhood. Though my son, Farik, I believe, may have done more justice to this topic. I just want to mention again that in Islam, Men and women are equal, but equality does not mean identicality. They're equal, but they are not identical. In some aspects, the men have a degree of advantage. In some aspects, the women have a degree of advantage. And I have to repeat the example given by my son, that if in a class, two students, A and B, both get 80 out of 100, both come out first in the class, and if we analyze the answer sheet, there are 10 answers to 10 questions. In answer to question number one, student A gets 9 out of 10. And student B gets 9 out of 10. So student A has the degree of advantage over B in answer number one. In answer to question two, student B gets 9 out of 10, and student A gets 9 out of 10. So in answer to question number two, student B has the degree of advantage over A. All the remaining answers from question number three to question number 10, all the remaining eight answers, both A and B, get eight out of 10. So if you add up, student A also gets 80 out of 100, student B also gets 80 out of 100. But student A has the advantage over B in answer number one, and student B has the advantage over A in answer number two. But overall, both are equal. Similarly, in Islam, men and women are equal, but equality doesn't mean identicality. In some aspects, the men have a degree of advantage. In some aspects, the women have a degree of advantage. If a robber enters my house, I will not tell my wife or my daughter, go and fight because I believe in women's liberalization, I believe in equality. Since Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 34, that Allah has given more strength to the male as compared to the female. So here in strength, the men have a degree advantage and it's their duty that they have to protect the women. As far as love and companionship, of the children to the parents are concerned, the mother has three times more advantage as compared to the father. So overall, men and women in Islam are equal, but equality does not mean identicality.